Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Humans are uh, certainly creatures of habit, aren't we? We find a certain place, we kind of become protective of it, don't we? Whether it's in church or in front of our television, in a certain class, at the dinner table or at the conference table at work, we settle in and we're pretty reluctant to relinquish our place, our position to just anyone who might come along. So tell me, are you sitting in your assigned seat this morning? <laughs> Let's see, there's my family, yep, I know where they are, yep, okay, yep, 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 Max and Joe, yep, okay, there's Bertie, yep, yep. Dale and Barb, they changed seats recently, I don't know. <laughs> when you entered church, have you ever had a visitor sitting in your place? It's kind of a crisis of conscience, isn't it? <laughs> How do you react? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're in my place. <laughs> or would we rejoice over one sinner who repents and has come into this great feast today? Rejoicing over one who comes to hear the word of the Lord and receive his gifts. I, I know what our sinful nature might say, and so I'm going to call you to repent because even for a moment, you probably resented being unseated by someone else. Now, in our living room, we have a love seat and we have two chairs. And I can tell this story in kind of two eras. B.C., or if you're going to be more politically correct, B.C.E., and that's um, before children and before children were everywhere. <laughs> There was, a, there was a bit of a pecking order in the living room. The, the master and mistress of the house and the dog. <laughs> and, uh, but the dog didn't always know its place. And uh, we definitely see this now when we're all sitting in our, when all the seats are taken, she kind of sits there staring at us, waiting. And if you go up to fill your glass or, or get a snack or something like that, she jumps in and takes that spot right away. Now, granted, she just wants to be close to us, but if she would simply recognize our place and her place, well, we would invite her up, scratch her behind the ears and rub her belly and, and enjoy her presence, but instead, she thinks she knows better, takes a place that really isn't given to her, and then it's, get down the lowest place. See, it's not unlike ourselves, is it? We try to find the master's place, the highest place. We take for ourselves what he has already promised he would freely give out of his own love to each and every one of us. Jesus came to a Sabbath feast. It's an important meal. Every week there would be uh, a meal where the, uh, the local rabbi might be invited over on the Sabbath day. The important people would gather there and he would be expected to teach. And there would be a meal and there would be fellowship and there would be, you know, that was just sort of the routine. It sounds a little bit familiar. We all gather in one place. We hear some teaching. We call it preaching. We have a meal, a sacred meal, and we have the fellowship and enjoyment of one another. See, it's not so unlike the Sabbath experience that Jesus had when we come here into God's house. And so I ask you, who's invited? Who's invited here into God's house, into the great banquet? First, he gives instructions to those who are already here. He says, don't fret and wrestle around for the best places in the house. There's plenty of room in the back. Don't worry. Just come up a little bit forward. Where is the best place, the best 
seat here at the banquet? Is it where you're sitting? A few rows further back? A few rows further forward? Is the best seat in the house the honored seat? Is it, is it Martin's place or mine? I tell you the truth. Friend, come up higher. For the most honored place here in this house, at this feast, at this banquet, is right there. At the rail. Where you come and you kneel and you receive the fruits of Christ's labor. Where you receive the meal of life everlasting. Where all your sin and sorrow and your guilt and your shame, they go away. Because they're placed here on the cross of Jesus. And they are forgiven. And they are wiped out. There is the best seat in the house. And so God invites you here to this wedding feast, to this banquet, and he would not have his house be empty. He wants it filled. So he invites everyone. And he says, friend, come up higher. Come sit next to me. Come and feast and enjoy. So that's the first instructions he gives. He, gives, he invites you to come up to where he is to set aside the things of this world, to repent. To repent of the worry of your, of your pride and your selfishness, the watching and trying to catch Jesus in, in an error, all those things that focus on yourself. Repent, set them aside, and come up higher. Come and know that God's love for you invites you here today. And to, to those who are outside of the banquet hall, the feast is ready. And so what does he say to his servants after this feast is ready? He says, go and tell everyone that the feast has been prepared. Come and eat. It's all ready. But what happens? What happens is we would try to go and share the message that the feast is ready. Dear friend, dear neighbor, you have been invited to forgiveness, to life, to salvation. What is the response we get? What is the response we sometimes give? Excuses. Oh, I, I've, I've bought a piece of property. It needs some attention. Oh, I need some, I need some me time. I'll come next week. Some of them are pretty good excuses. Well, yeah, you know, you've, you've bought some oxen. You've got to take care of them. I haven't bought any oxen recently, but, you know, something needs your attention. Or, I've just gotten married. I, I need to spend some time with my family. Oh, it's, it's a very uh, noble reason, but it still places you somewhere other than in the wedding feast. So repent of your excuses. None of those things, none of those excuses that we might make on any given week really hold any water. Because the invitation is still for you. The invitation is still to you to say, come and hear God's word. Feast on scripture. Feast on prayer. Feast on Christ as he comes to you. Fine. Some will make excuses. So let's keep inviting Let's go to the poor, to the blind, to the lame. Let's go out. Not because they can repay us. We don't do evangelism because it'll look better on TV when the pews are full. We don't do evangelism because we might fill our offering plates or meet the budget. No. We invite anyone. The poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind... Why? Because they can't repay us. Their place is here in God's house, not because they can pay for it, but because God invites them. Your place here in God's house today is not because you've earned it, or because you can pay for it, or because you have something to give. It's because Christ invites you that he can give to you the greatest feast of forgiveness and life and salvation.
That's your place here in this house. So the excuses go past. All are invited in. Those who are near and in the city. And the report is, well, we've invited everybody in the city and there's still room. What should we do now? Go farther. Go out into the countryside, to the highways and the byways. Go near and far. Go to the farthest reaches of the world. Invite everyone and so that they would know you have a place here in God's house. You are welcome here in God's house. And it's not the lowest place. It's not the place of the greatest humility. You've been invited to the greatest place. To come and receive every gift that comes from God in Christ Jesus. You are invited here this day to the greatest feast of Christ. And so repent. Repent of, of selfishness, of self-seeking, of, of seat-seeking. Be brought low by the words of our Lord and be humbled. For where is the honored place of the marriage feast of the Lamb? It's right here. So come and receive. We have been called to the one feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, where he is the host, and he is the feast. He sits as bridegroom in the most honored place of all. And it's called by his heavenly Father. And we are his guests. We are gathered here. And Jesus, who sits in the most exalted places of all, well, guess what he does with his seat? He gives it to you. Jesus humbles himself. He does not exalt himself. He humbles himself to be born of the Virgin Mary, to suffer under Pontius Pilate, to be crucified, dead, and buried. So that on the third day he rose again and ascends into heaven. With the greatest honor, he took on the lowliest form of a frail mortal, and he took your place at the foot of the table. What is it to be in a feast with Jesus? That man who came in who had dropsy. It's like um, edema, swelling, extra retention of water is what, is what the word means. And Jesus healed him of the disfigurement of, of his being ritually unclean. Jesus heals him. <coughs> See, when you come to a feast with Jesus, if you're unclean, if you're an outcast, if you're blind, you're lame, you're poor, a feast with Jesus brings you wholeness. Healing, forgiveness. Think of the Last Supper when Jesus hosts the Passover meal. There he is as the greatest host. And what does he do? He takes the lowliest place. He wraps himself with a servant's cloth and washes the feet of his disciples. And so he washes your feet. He washed your head in holy baptism making you his child, forgiving you all your sins, and he calls you to a feast of forgiveness and life and salvation even today. So we gather at his banquet. We take our lowly places. We fall on our knees. We confess our sins. Humbly, we are brought low by the word of the Lord. And then, the founder of the feast, the son himself, he picks us up off of our knees and bids us come up higher, friend, to the honored place where you are not just guest, you are his beloved bride. By his grace, at his invitation, we enter here to the great and eternal feast and discover that you are the bride of Christ, his holy church, honored and beloved and this feast is prepared for none other than you as the guest of honor. So come. Come to the head of the table. Feast, eat, be satisfied, be forgiven of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.